Right. Uh, we are turning our attention uh, to the athletics this weekend because at the European Cross Country Championship, Ireland had uh, gold in the under 23s. Uh, Keelan Kilrehel finished sixth and he was part of the team who helped the team uh, win that. And he's with us now this morning. Keelan, good morning to you. Hello, how are you keeping? Yeah, very well. Congratulations, first of all. Uh, I guess mm. this uh, it was just such an unbelievable result. It was an unbelievable day for Irish cross country. When did you realise that you were going to be in with a shout of team gold uh, during the race? Uh, I suppose I suppose during the race, I still wasn't really thinking of a team goal. I suppose like you're trying to just get to the end of it yourself. But I kind of, I knew one stage probably the only one I can highlight really is like when I went by, I went by two GB lads that, that they were there second and third floors. And I was like, I'm going by them two tires up there as well. So I'm like, geez, we, they're, they were half favourites to win it so I was like if I'm going by them too we should be up there in the team but at the same time you, you try not to think about that during the race you're just trying to get to the end of it When you're chasing people down how big a factor is it that you're actually racing at home and that there is a massive crowd out there in Abbottstown Yeah it was I sense uh, to a few people as well like uh, it was all about beforehand nearly not letting the crowd affect it to start and just being relaxed and patient because you could get very excited as was but like, I think I was like yeah the last lap in the home straight like having that Having a crowd definitely helps. It was, uh, I'd say, it was it was the loudest and biggest crowd with your cross. I'd say there was ever like so. No, it's massive. There's this great uh, video and there's images as well of you after crossing the finish line. The stewards have a hold of you, basically trying yeah, to say, yeah. "Get out of the way for everybody coming through." And you're like, "No, get away from me! I want to hug my teammate." <laughs> that really summed up, I guess, the spirit that exists in your team. Yeah, I definitely yeah. Because like, uh, <laughs> I got up, I was wrecked, and I know where I got the energy from. But I was able to sprint over to power. Yeah, I suppose you just know these guys for years. Like, and I'm, like they're my best friends, even outside running and stuff. So, yeah, it's just like growing up and racing with them for years and then just to be able to win a goal with them, yeah, it's, it's unreal. Because like. that's what's really interesting is that it is at, at a base level an individual sport, but the reason why you were all on the, the front pages of the sports sections yesterday is because of, of the team spirit. So has that been something that, that you've fostered over the last couple of years to try and look at this in a collective sense as much as focusing on yourself and you, and your own individual progress? Yeah, I suppose cross country is always a bit like that, especially European level. Like it's probably, like you said, a team is just as big as anything. And like It's kind of weird to run because like everything's so individual, but you do get these championships and like you just spend the whole weekend with your team and like, it's really just all about how your team can do and like no one's talking about themselves really. It's mostly just like how we can help the team and yeah, it's like, no, it's really nice. Uh, was there an expectation, Keelan, that this would be a really successful meet for Ireland? Yeah, definitely. Like, I suppose, I don't know if people thought our team was really like the one that would win gold. Like, I know, like there was, like Ireland sent a very strong team this time because like everyone was coming home for national stuff because like Wednesday in Ireland, everyone wanted to be there. People were flying home and like it was just mad but like the expectation on ourselves, we kind of said, like, if we can get a medal, if we can get just under that 40 po- points, we get a medal. I'm just, we're nearly looking at bronze, much as anything, but yeah, when we've seen Cole come up, I don't think any of us knew what to do. <laughs> and, and what did he do in the Ashman? How did he celebrate it? Uh, we went back to, to his hotel there, like, uh, I suppose it's kind of hard these days to properly celebrate, but you can still enjoy it. Like. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, Keelan, your, your own story is, is fascinating. You're, you're somebody who people might be familiar with from. I suppose about six years ago. Can, can you take us back to, to 2015 when, I'm not sure what age you were, but you were about to run in the Community Games National Finals and you had a bad bike accident. Can you take us back to that summer of 2015 and and tell us what happened? Um, yeah, I suppose I'll try to keep it short in a way, but uh, yeah, so that year, like uh, I was just going out on my bike. It was really, I suppose it was half a mile from my house and uh yeah, I suppose uh, young and foolish. I just uh, I went flying down this hill that uh, I shouldn't have been going down, and uh, yeah, I came to a bottom and I met a car, but I didn't actually hit the car because I, I got such a fright when I seen it that I just hit hit in the brakes and I went flying out over the handlebars anyways. And yeah, after that it was lights out, and yeah, so I suppose that put me out for a while. I had I had like three broken vertebrae in my back, and then uh, a fracture in my neck as well, so I'd have a a brace bone. Yeah, I was on that for six weeks, but. Like, you're kind of, at a time where, at a time you don't take it serious, I suppose that the first thing I was asking about, even after the operation, was just when can I get back to football, when can I get back to running? Like, you kind of, it does make it easier when it's that age. You just, you kind of, you don't realise the seriousness and you just, yeah, you just get back at it. Because I was reading up on that yesterday and it, and it did seem remarkable how your first reaction to it once 
you're in hospital because you, you get brought to Crumlin at, at that point is is how do I get back mm-hmm. how, how do I get back running how do I get back playing sports because you were playing a number of different sports at the time but the prognosis could have been quite serious and it was quite serious at, at that point Keelan there, there seemed to be almost a, a beautiful ignorance in your own head about about what could have happened in, in that moment yeah exactly that was it like this I suppose yeah the first time it came to my realization was like after surgery and surgery came in and I was like uh, my first question was to uh, just when can I get back to football and, like he was just like hey he kind of smiled and laughed and he was like this should be the last thing from your head and like yeah that was the first time I was top up upset about it but yeah, because like even a, even a week later, I probably shouldn't be saying this as well, but uh, I hopped in the I hopped in the stationary bike at home because I was afraid of losing fitness of what I've done over the last two years. So that's just yeah, I know it's probably just a bit nuts, like, but yeah, it's just your mindset at the time. And when they're telling you, yeah, going back in a few weeks, uh, probably not a good idea. Like, is there a tone to that, Keelan, where they're like, "Listen, we don't know what you'll be able to do in the long run. Never mind in three to six weeks." Yeah, definitely. Like, definitely. Yeah, uh, I suppose. I suppose the one really said that to me there at the time because, like, I was going back telling my coach home, Philip, that uh, oh, I'd be back to him four weeks training now. Just <laughs> and uh, he kind of smiled and laughed at me because he didn't want to break to me that you know this isn't going to be just four weeks. Like, you're gonna. It's not just better getting the brace off and stuff, and you're fine. Like, this is. We take a lot of physio, and like it'll take a lot more work than that. But I suppose it did only like run wise, it did only take three months to get back. But it's just I just had to be careful. I suppose not to hit my back. While it was because it was still broken, like so, I couldn't really, yeah, I still had to be aware of it. How, how close did you come, do you know, to, to life changing injuries? Um, yeah, very close, I suppose. Uh, like my back probably wasn't a big problem, even though everyone thinks that, like, there was a, it was a C1 fracture in my neck, and uh, they said if that was broken, it was, it was like that. I'd never, I'd never walk, maybe never talk again. So, yeah, it's kind of weird even saying that, but. Yeah, you just never really, I suppose there's nothing at the bad side of it, I suppose. You think I'm all right now. Yeah, I can't really complain. I can only imagine. I'm not sure if you've like, spoken to your family even in the, in the aftermath of that. As a couple of years have passed and you've got back to, back to I guess, continuing on an unbelievable trajectory of, of success sporting-wise. Have, have you spoken to your family about the, the worries that they had at the time? Because I'd imagine from their perspective it was a, a fairly traumatic experience as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I know they were a lot more worried than I was, but especially mom, she's very about me at the best times but yeah the last thing they were thinking about was sport as well they just wanted to see me home and <laughs> talking and walking like but uh, yeah I think they took the brunt of it as well because the surgeon would come and tell them what was happening but yeah <laughs> it was a weird time and when you did get back Keelan what was that actually like what was that sense of being back and, and being able to run again and, and do other things yeah it was class because like I was just getting so sick at home because I was home. I mean, because I was meant to take four weeks off school as well, and I think I only took three because I was like, "Oh, mum, I'm going daft here. Can I just go back to school?" I never thought I'd say it, but uh, yeah, I know that first run back was class because it's just yeah, like you're just like just sitting on the couch, just, like not being able to play football with the lads and stuff. It just didn't suit me because like even the odd time I was I was caught playing football when I shouldn't have been because like I was back running, so I felt oh I'm fine, but then I'd hop into a five side with the lads and like just outside and everyone roaring at me to cop on and get back because if I got hit in my back at all, like, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was stupid at the time, but you just, uh, you say it's too tempting. And did you go back playing everything afterwards? Like, did you go back playing football properly? Because uh, you were, it, it was Gaelic and soccer you were playing up to that, was it? Yeah, yeah, so, I, like, at the time, I was just, I was stuck in everything, like, I'd heard in football, soccer, running, but, like, I got back running first and then, like, when my back fully healed, I think it was, like, seven months there, I got back playing football then. I just went back to training with them and, yeah, so we surely got back into playing matches, so it didn't really take too long in the end. Right, so when did you specialise? When did you decide running is going to be the thing for me? Uh, I suppose I suppose I got to 15 and 16 and like like training starts getting a bit more intense and you're like, like stuff are clashing and you're like, I was like, you kind of, it just happened naturally in a way, like I didn't really, it wasn't a big decision, I didn't have a big sit down about it, I just knew myself like, like running has a lot more opportunities for me like than than any other sport like I'd obviously have loved to be in Premier League football like but this is kind of yeah what it was what it was kind of most held in and what it, the biggest opportunity so it was fairly fairly easy choice then because like it's not just a sense in 2015 that you were going to compete 
in the nationals in community games it was a sense that you were going there to win and I think you you do go there the following summer then and actually get gold right so this this was clearly the sport yeah. that you could look at and say I can be one of the best in the country at yeah definitely I suppose I was only starting now as well and just like when you get that big success at all and I'd be like well if I could stick at this training wise and actually like because like, some of these guys would have a bit of a jump in as well like if I could just get a few years of training here God knows all you can do I suppose and yeah it's been a yeah, haven't really looked back since, I suppose. When did you realise that it was going to be something that could lead to a moment like Sunday, where you thought to yourself that actually winning a, a European medal actually could be could become a reality? Yeah, I suppose I probably definitely didn't think it'd be Sunday. Mm. Um, like I knew the realistic chance to do well, like and like even I suppose in the hotel room the night before, like and stuff like we were like, yeah, kind of like if we can get one of us into top five, we're like looking at that. He's he's definitely should be top five. Me and Power were just like. If we can come two of us top fifteen, like we've a good chance of a medal. And like I said, top fifteen is definitely realistic, but it's still be a good result. But yeah, I just didn't expect to come sixth at this early in my career, anyways. To be honest, yeah. It's been a, a relatively interesting year for, from your own perspective as well this year, because I know you were out in Kenya training with a couple of the other lads who were part yeah. of the team on Sunday. Can, yeah. can you talk us through that experience and and I guess the, the idea behind going down there and what you actually got up to? Yeah, like that's it was kind of just once in a lifetime stuff because like. Especially at the start, it was just it's a, such a different world. But um, yeah, I went with Dara, McLennie, and Jamie Battle. They're both lads in the team, and both lads they've known for a long time. But yeah, I suppose he, Dara kind of was the one who said to me in November because he had gone the year before, and I'd always said, right, I'll go with, definitely go to next year. But like he kind of mentioned it to me in November, I didn't think it was an option because with all that was going on with COVID. But I kind of just said, yeah, sure, why not? We'll we'll go and like go for the best of COVID guys that we get be able to go for and stuff. But yeah, I think the three of us had the best five weeks of our life out there. And like, just training wise, it just helps so much. It's just, it's all you have to worry about there. And like, when you come down from altitude, then like, like me and Jamie probably didn't get the chance to prove that it worked. But like, Dara came back and he ran 7.50 for 3K and ran national records like, and stuff. Like, it definitely, it's as much the environment you're in as the altitude. But yeah, the three of us definitely kind of push each other on. What, what was the environment like then, if, if it's as much to do with that as the altitude? Yeah, so like, it's just, it's just so routine, like like you just don't even think about it. Like it's just up at seven every morning, go get breakfast, go train, come back, sleep, eat, go get, go train again. And like you leave the I know probably if we we're going again actually in two weeks' time. But like I suppose you're sitting and having breakfast with some of the world's best, like and like you walk to the top of the road and you just see the Olympic champion or, or European champion in Mumbai yeah, and it's yeah, it's it's a weird like weird, but like yeah, it's definitely it's eye open. How much does that bring you on being able to train and even exist in the same sphere as people who have won at the very top level to I guess it's it's great that I, cause I know you're on a scholarship in DCU and, and the athletics program there is excellent but to be able to remove yourself from that go into an international stage and train there with the world's best for a while I presume that just brings your levels up to, to a whole new level oh definitely yeah just like just looking and like talking to them like it's just yeah it's very eye opening like but at the same time we kind of all came back saying like you know, I just, we'd love that to be us, like, and you're just like, yeah, like you said, like, you think, it's like, oh, no, that's so unrealistic, but, like, at the same time, like, they're, they have two legs as well, kind of, like, and you're like, some of them just, like, it's just pure work that got them there, like, and they'll tell you that. So, yeah, it's kind of, it definitely, yeah, kind of, just push you on, you're like, oh, I just want to get there, like. What's next for this team, for this, I guess, very exciting crop of, of young runners at the moment Keelan for yourself and your mates basically you, you obviously mentioned Kenya is up next in a, in a few weeks time for a bit more training but, but what comes after that? Yeah I suppose we all kind of have our own our own separate race schedule in 2022 really because you go back onto track and like I've still travel with the last two races and stuff and we all go together but uh, yeah I suppose the, this time next year is, is it's in uh, Turin Italy the, but uh, five of our team is still on that team uh, in Italy and there's obviously other lads who could easily make it so like we was just like we're saying like, I know everything's on the day and like, it could all go around but we've easily got a chance next year to do every bit as well so yeah we'll all definitely be looking at it Alright well very best of luck with everything that's coming down the tracks in, in 2022 but congratulations once again on Sunday and absolutely incredible results Keelan Clarell thanks a million thanks a million